Hi everyone, Assalamualaikum. So, we will be talking about the pet sample t-test. When do we use the pet sample t? We use the test if there's a difference in the measured characteristics between two points of time. So, that is like time one or time two or um, before training, after training, before taking a um, hypertension drug and after taking the hypertension drug, before consuming a diet pill and after consuming a diet pill. You also use it to test effectiveness, right? before implementing a policy and after implementing a policy and things like that. So that's how you use sample T, pet, pet sample T. It is also used to test the differences between pet observations like husband and wife in a single household, like probably your right hand and left hand, or, or like um, a student and uh, their mentor, okay? Anything that can be pet together. So that's when we use the pet sample T. So take a careful look at the objective of the test. It's to test the mean differences in the population if it's equal to zero, okay? Um, so, you can see the um, hypothesis over here. Um, the null hypothesis would be like formula X um, like a, or diet pill X has no effect on respondents' weight loss. Um, formula X causes significant weight loss for respondents. As you can see that there's a lot of variants or a lot of variations on how you write the um, hypothesis it can be like this effectiveness it can be before and after it doesn't matter all right it doesn't matter um it is still the same these are the statistics of interest so when we talk about d it's the differences okay which is why your hypothesis over here it has a mu d or the mean for differences okay and then the standardized difference from the target of zero, um, so that's your t square, okay? This is standardized differences. So t is your standardized differences from the target of zero, how it varies. And this is calculated using error scores, okay? And then the df is calculated um, using sample size minus one. So that's how you get the df. And then if I ask you how to calculate the sample size, or if I ask you what's the sample size, then you just take your df and add it one. And then you're going to get the N or your sample size. And then we want to take a look at the two-tail probability of type 1 error of the or the p-value. And then the 95% confidence interval. And then the effect size. So this is how you calculate the effect size. It's just your T um, squared divided by T squared plus DF. That's the effect size formula. If you want to include the effect size. Just to help you out, I don't need you to calculate the effect size. It's okay. All right? So here are the assumptions. The assumptions is the same with other parametric tests. The dependent variable needs to be um, normally distributed. Um, it needs to be continuous. You can't have you can't have a categorical TV here, okay? For you to be able to run a pet sample T, um, observations are independent of one another. Uh, it doesn't rely on one another. So the dependent variable should be normally distributed. Uh, dependent variable should not contain any outliers because it's sensitive to outliers. So here are the example. Um, of a pet sample T observation, um, you can see that we want to study on the drug effectiveness. So 16 patients were selected randomly. Their BP uh, were recorded at the beginning of the study and also at the end of the study. So that's before and after. All right. So you have um, you have 16 respondents, but how many observations? So that's 16 plus 16 multiplied by two you have um, 32 observations, right? But respondents, you have 16, okay? So objective is to test if the drug is effective in the treatment of hypertension. So hypothesis, I would say, um, not my alternative hypothesis would be there is a significant difference in the BP um, after consumption of the hypertension drug. So that's my alternative hypothesis, okay? Boleh je, tak ada masalah, right? So how do you obtain a pet sample T? I'm going to show you my stats here. So this is my, I have already inputted all the data in my um, SPSS. You just go to analyze over here. You click on compare means because for T test it's always mean comparison, right? So pet sample T and then I have already inputted over here. Let me just reset this for you. So before and then I want the after, okay? You don't need to do anything with the options as well as the bootstrap. Just click on okay. You're going to get your, okay, there you go. All right, so we have the mean and as well as the standard deviations. We also have the pet sample correlations, how they are related to one another. And then we have the pet sample t-test. Of course, they are related to one another. It's the blood pressure from the same person, right? Okay, so we have the uh, pet sample t-test over here. Let's go back to our slides. 
Okay, so as you can see over here, the mean before, mean BP before drug consumption is 154. So mean BP after the drug consumption is 149. Okay, standard deviation of 14.01 as well as 15.17. Okay, so be consistent whenever you are reporting. For example, if you report mean with only two decimal points, you report standard deviations also only with two decimal points. We don't want to be seeing like the mean is at three decimal points and suddenly your standard deviation is at two decimal points, at one decimal point, okay? So that doesn't that doesn't look nice or pretty at all. All right, so just uh, let's take a look at the correlation uh, between the before and after is close to one. So they are closely related. So let's take a look at the findings. For findings, mean difference, this is the mean difference, right? 4.9 uh, for, with a standard deviation of um, 6.37 okay and then standardized difference that's your t right 3.1 uh, 3.10 with a df of 15 our n is 16 right so we have 32 observations because of before and after but we only have 16 respondents okay so df of 15 the two tail p value of the test is uh, 0 0.007 just like james bond which is less than 0 0.05 Okay, 95% confidence interval for the mean difference is um, 1 point. So this is the lower bound, upper bound, yeah. So 1.54, 8.33 and do not contain 0 because both are on the positive side. So the tips that is that you can see, um, positive and negative. If it's positive and negative, then probably it passes through 0. Then that strengthen, strengthens your p-value. Like for example, if it passes through zero, then definitely the, your p-value probably will not be significant. Okay, it will probably not be significant. So now it's significant. We don't we don't pass through zero. Eta squared. This is how you calculate. It's just um squared of t divided by um t squared plus your df. That's it. So you're gonna get your eta squared. Okay. So before drawing to a conclusion, you have to prove that this data or the differences. Um, is distributed normally. So how do we do that differences? So let's go to our uh, file here. I have already calculated the differences just in case you forgot. So transform, you compute the uh, variable. So take the before and take the after, uh, minus them. So you get the differences. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, okay? Uh, no no worries. Okay, so uh, no, I don't want to change. All right. so when you have this, you go to analyze, you go to descriptive statistics, you go to explore. We only want the normality test. Just to make our life easier. Let's take the normality test and run it again. And you wait here. So there you go. Um, normality test, it's more than 0 0.05. So data is assumed to be normally distributed. There you go. Shapiro will suggest a p-value of 0 0.053. Since p-value is more than 0 0.05, the scores are considered to be normally distributed. So as for conclusion, 95% uh, confidence interval for mean differences does not contain the tested value of 0. P-value is less than 0 0.05. Eta squared is more than 15.15. So if you didn't calculate the uh, eta squared, you just remove this altogether. Yeah, Just remove the uh, statement altogether. Just stop here. Okay, That's, That is a significant change in the BP after the drug administration. There you go. So but how do you, I know that there's a significant change in the BP after the drug administration? You look back at your mean. Okay, Before is 1.54. Um, uh, after is 1.49. There's a significant change. That means the BP dropped. Okay, BP reduced. So that's what we want, right? We don't want a high BP. Um, there you go here. Decrease in the mean for the BP before, suggesting that the drug is effective. We are 95% confident that the reduction of the BP is between 1.54 and 8.33. Okay, this, we want to know the reduction. It's between 1.54 and 8.33. Where do we get this? This is the lower bound and upper bound of the 95% confident interval. So this is how you write the results in APA style. So this is just the conclusion. I just want to show the conclusion and this is the results of the APA style. So a PET sample t-test was conducted to compare the respondents before and after BP upon taking a hypertension drug. There was a significant change in the BP before and after. So before you have to write the mean as well as the standard deviation. So this is APA. And BP after mean and standard deviation t in bracket, df equals to 3.10, p-value is less than 0 0.005. We are 95% confident that between um, 1.54 mmghg and 8.33 of BP was reduced after taking the hypertension drug. So it doesn't need to be exactly the same. 
as long as you have all this information here. Okay, so this is your own words. How you how how do you want to put it? All right. So you don't need to copy and paste word for word. Okay. So let's take a look at um, exercise number one. Okay, nutritionists wanted to test if a diet formula helps to reduce weight among adults. She selected 20 subjects, recorded their weight in kilograms and placed them on a diet for four weeks. At the end of the fourth week, their weights were recorded again. Okay, so how many, uh, how many patients do we have? We have 20 patients. How many observations do we have? We have 40 observations because we are taking the weight before and weight after for 20 patients, right? So how do we do this? So this is where you should stop. Um, or pause the video and then try to do um, this exercise number one on your own and then compare it to mine okay compare your results to my results so i have already inputted the um the before and after weight inside of my um, data view so and then just go to analyze as uh, as per normal compare means go to pet sample t-test and then you want weight before and weight after just click on ok going to show you the results so let's wait for the results over there so you compare your results with um, my results or with this results there you go it's the same results i believe let's take a look at the mean 81.50 and 80.20 okay it's the same so sample size is 20 and then observations we have 40 but um, if i ask you for sample size definitely it's 20 if i ask you for observation is double the sample size okay so let's take a look here the mean so mean before is 81.50 with a standard deviation of 9.110. Mean after 80.20 with a standard deviation of 8.883 or 8.88 or 9.11. Okay, not a lot of difference, right? So the objective um, earlier on, um, there is a significant difference in weight before and weight after. You see how I can um, vary my hypothesis. I can write it in any way possible, but it is still asking the same thing. Okay. So let's take a look at the findings over here. Mean difference is 1.30 with a standard deviation of 3.629. Standardized difference, let's take a look at the T-score is 1.602 with a DF of 19. Two-tailed p-value of the test, um, it's more than 0 0.05. It, signi it signifies to us that probably there's no differences. So that also means that the, um, the diet formula is not effective, right? So you can see that mm, you can take a look at the lower and upper bound. It contains the value of zero. As I mentioned earlier, this is not significant. This is will also indicate the same thing. Theta squared, if you want to calculate, you can calculate. Okay. So, and then you have to test whether it's normal or not. If it's not normal, if the differences are not normal, then definitely you have to run another non-parametric test. Okay. So, I have already showed you how to compute the variable, right? You just compare the differences. So, let me just run the um, descriptive statistics on it. So, click on explore, um, differences in weight, um, and then I want normality plot. Okay. So, let's see our normality test. Test of normality. Um, it seems that the data, the DV is distributed or the differences is distributed normally. So it doesn't have any issues. Okay, so as you can see here, shapiro will test of normality suggests a p-value of 0.971. Since the p-value is more than 0 0.05, the scores are considered to be normally distributed. Um, assumptions of normal distributions were upheld. Conclusion, the 95% confidence interval for mean differences contain the tested value of 0, p-value is more than 0 0.05, Results indicate that there is no significant change in the weight before and after the consumption of the diet formula. As a conclusion, the special formula, diet is not effective in reducing weight. There you go. Okay. So don't forget to write down D in the APA format. Okay. APA format you can find up here. So I don't want to be writing it down again, again, and again. Did I provide the APA? Yeah. There you go. The results in the APA style. Okay. So I want to say, uh, I want to show you the second example over here. So it's very important for you to see um, how we resort to non-parametric tests, okay? So a trainer wanted to test if the muscular strength differ between the right arm and the left arm among a group of athletes. She randomly selects 14 right-handed athletes and measured the muscular strength of, of their right, not on, of their right and left arms. Data are as below. Okay, how many subjects do we have? We have 14 subjects. 
two muscular strength observation so that's going to be uh, 28 right okay as you can see here we have 14 observations so everything is there then you go to analyze again compare means um, this is bad sample t um, left arm and right arm or if you or if you prefer um, right arm and left arm so it depends on you okay right arm and left arm doesn't matter right so the results wait for the results okay there you go so the mean for the right arm is 16.40 uh, left arm is 15.47 it seems that uh, from our just on the surface we can see that probably the right arm has a bit better muscular strength uh, than the left arm so let's take a look at the standard deviation is 2.09 and 1.7 right standard error 0.559 and 0.45 okay correlation is 0.847 also close to one um pet sample test um the mean differences is uh, 0.929 for every pair the mean is um on average 0.929 okay close to one standard deviation of 1.112 standard error mean is 0.297 let's take a look at the t t is uh, equal to 3.123 with a df of 13 so let's take a look at the significant tail okay um, it seems that it's significant. So let's uh, see. Okay, seems significant, less than 0 0.05. Uh, take a look at the lower and upper bound. Uh, does not contain the value of 0, but the P is stronger than the confidence interval differences. Okay, um, confidence interval. Do you know why it's different? Because um, this is right arm minus left arm. And as you can see here, this is left minus right. Um, it does not matter that much. Okay, it does not matter that much. No worries. Okay, what you need to do next is to conduct the um, normality test of the differences. So you go to compute and um, create a new variable of the differences. Um, and that test for its normality. Again, analyze, descriptive, um, explore, go to differences in strength, plot, I want the normality plot. I want to see if it's normal or not, okay? So why do I say it doesn't matter? It's because, um, as you can see just now, it's negative, negative, and um, here it's positive, positive, so it doesn't matter. This is what matters most, so let's go to normality test. So let's take a look at the normality test. Oh no, our data seems to be not normally distributed. The differences are not normally distributed. So what do we need to do next is actually, you see, evidence suggests that um, the significant differences in the muscular strength are not um, normal. So they violate the assumptions of normality. To validate the results, to validate your results, whether there's a difference between left and right arm, you need to conduct a non-parametric analysis. So for the PET T test, the non-parametric counterpart is the Wilcoxon sign rank test. Okay, the Wilcoxon sign rank. So the assumptions, of course, the non-parametric also have assumptions, but they are very robust. Um, the DV should be measured at the ordinal or continuous level. IV should consist of two categorical related groups, okay, or a match pair, just like our PET sample T, right? The distribution of the differences between um, the two related groups must be symmetrical. It can be, it's not normal, but it needs to be symmetrical. Okay, but we seldom test that um, assumptions anyway. So how do we run the non-parametric Wilcoxon sign rank test? You click on analyze, go to non-parametric, custom your analysis. Okay, and then we want uh, Wilcoxon rank as well as the Hodges lemon. Okay, so go to analyze, find non-parametric. So this is related samples. Okay, go to fields, um, the test field should be the left and right arms, okay, go to settings, okay, customize the test. So I want Wilcoxon rank, okay, I also want Hodges lemon because I want the confidence interval, so run. There you go. 
So the hypothesis test summary it tells you okay reject the null reject the null except the um alternative when you accept the alternative you were saying that the left and right arms are significant uh, the muscular strength in the left and right arm is dif uh, is significantly different okay again so confidence interval is below um is between two uh, point two fifty and one point six five okay still so look at the Wilcoxon rank. Uh, it is significant. Thank you. As you can see here, you can see that the um, this is the right arm, and this is the left left arm. Okay. So how do we report it? There you go. Evidence from the parametric test shows that uh, shows a significant difference in the muscular strength between the right and left arm. So this is in EPA. Yeah? However, the test assumptions were not met. So this is from our our PET sample T just now, okay? Evidence from the parametric test. And this is the results from our Wilcoxon. So a Wilcoxon sign rank test indicated that the median strength. So just now for parametric, we use mean. For non-parametric here, Wilcoxon rank, we use median. Okay, it's because median are not um, badly affected by outliers. That the median strength between left and right arm were significantly different with a z-score of 1.03.50, the p-value of less than 0 0.05. The right arm seems to be stronger than the left arm. Okay, right arm seems to be stronger than the left arm. Okay, so now this is your homework for um, homework number four. We have uh, one homework for one sample t and we have another homework for pet sample t test. Um, try it out yourself and enjoy. Thank you very much. I'll see you in our next video.